Good morning. Is anybody listening? We're looking at Jeremiah 36, verses 9 to 15 today for our reading. Now it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people who came from the cities of Judah to Jerusalem. Then Baruch read from the book the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the upper court, at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house, in the hearing of all the people. When Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord from the book, he then went down to the king's house, into the scribe's chamber, and there all the princes were sitting, Elishama, the scribe, Deliah, the son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, the son of Akbor, Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Then Micaiah declared to them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read the book in the hearing of the people. Therefore, all the princes sent Jehudi, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushi, to Baruch, saying, Take in your hand the scroll from which you have read in the hearing of the people, and come. So Baruch, the son of Neriah, took the scroll in his hand and came to them. And they said to him, Sit down now and read it in our hearing. So Baruch read it in their hearing. So yesterday morning, we saw that although Jeremiah is no longer permitted in the temple precincts, he's been canceled, that he's going to send Baruch, and Brooke's going to go and read the prophecies. So that's the approach. Jeremiah prophesies, Baruch writes it down, and Baruch goes, and he proclaims. And this has been going on now for a period of time, apparently, about a year's gone by. Now a special day of fasting has been called, and Baruch is able to get a hearing from uh, some of these important people. And one of them goes back and he goes to the princes in the king's house and he says, look, you need to hear this guy. They, they go back, they send for him and they bring Baruch back in. Now, this is kind of an unusual development. For years, this has gone on and Jeremiah has, has, has presented, Baruch has presented now for a period of time and they haven't had really any big takers, but now they're getting to talk to these people, very influential people, actually in the king's house. Baruch comes and he's going to tell them all over again what he's just been proclaiming in the temple. Now for him to get a hearing at this time, it's interesting because, you know, the king doesn't want to hear anything about it. The priests don't really want to hear anything about it. But God has been giving this message and it has gone from Jeremiah and it's been delivered also from Baruch. It probably felt like nobody was listening and yet all this time a spiritual interest was slowly developing. As the people looked around, the relationship between the kingdom of Judah, the kingdoms around them, uh, some of these princes, some of these high, important, influential people are very concerned, and he gets a hearing. And now Baruch himself is going to go and address them directly. You might think that it doesn't really matter, nobody's listening, nothing uh, important is going on, but actually it is. It's just happening behind the scenes. God just hasn't uh, given you that inner inside picture. But your work is being effective if you're serving the Lord. His word never comes back empty, does it? So influential people were listening and the word is being proclaimed. You know, spiritual forces are working for us and against us. They're all around. God's truth has power. If we are in his service, he will not allow his word to come back empty as we're going to see tomorrow morning. Your business and my business is to persist in the king's service. Keep on serving the king of heaven and earth. Keep on doing whatever uh, your ministry is that God has given you. And you know that he's given you. He's given every one of us some kind of different kinds of ministry. So he's given you one too. I'm quite sure of it. You don't think you're being listened to? You know what? At some point, God will give you hearers. You know, we're too easily discouraged. I think the devils are amazed how quickly we go quiet and numb and stupid, uh, but when we should be actively, intelligently sharing the belief and the, the way that God has touched our life. And if the iron doesn't seem hot, you know what? We should keep on striking it until it is hot. You know, God is still on his throne. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we want to be faithful. We want to be right. Jeremiah wanted to be faithful. The devil tried hard to close up the way against him, but you worked through Baruch, and now this message is going to get a hearing somewhere. So Lord, bless, we pray, and help us to be just as diligent as Jeremiah and Baruch were, and not to fail, not to give up, not to feel it's hopeless. Let's labor on for years if that's what it takes, and help people find their way to Jesus and his present truth for this hour. Bless us, we pray. Help us, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. So there are listeners, won't you ask God to show you what way your voice can help towards the kingdom. Have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus.